In this video, we're talking about future Hurricane Henry as it approaches the Northeast. Hurricane warnings have already been issued across Long Island and portions of Connecticut, and then we'll be tracking severe storms that will pack a punch across the central portion of the U.S. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. There is a lot to unpack this morning with Hurricane Henry. It's important to note, however, that what happens today, during the day today, will vastly determine what the impacts will be on the Northeast coast tomorrow. And that's why I'll be doing a second update this evening in the form of a members only live stream around 6 p.m. Eastern. If you're a member of the channel, you'll have access to a super in-depth update on Hurricane Henry with all the latest forecast data models and the National Hurricane Center update, etc., etc. And it will be live. So if you have questions, I'll answer all of them in the chat. So if you've been thinking about becoming a member, now is the time to do it, okay? And you know, if you become a member, it's not only that you get perks and exclusive access to live streams, it's the number one way to support this channel and allow it to continue to grow in the future. Now, if you cannot or do not want to become a member, I completely understand. I will have a full, complete, in-depth update tomorrow morning on Hurricane Henry right before landfall so you can get all the information that you need. Just make sure you subscribe with notifications on and let's start talking about the weather. All right, here's a big old look at the United States of America. And as you can see, there's a big storm system that moved through the central portion of America last night, causing some severe weather and and on the southeastern side of that, there's some heavy rain going on in western Kentucky and western Tennessee uh, that's prompted a lot of flash flooding out here, okay? So this rain is going to let up later today, but as of right now, there's ongoing flooding west of Nashville all the way up towards the Ohio River in Kentucky, okay? So uh, that's going to be letting up. That's not going to spread too far to the south and east. And then, of course, our uh, attention is going to shift over here to Hurricane Henri. Not looking very ornery this morning, honestly. It's looking pretty tame. Uh, and uh, that's that could be a sign of things to come, okay? Uh, yesterday, when we looked at this storm, it looked a little bit more organized. It had some deeper convection around the center of circulation. Today, it looks a little lopsided, and it looks a little disconnected, uh, at least at least from what I can tell right now, okay? Now, uh, just because it looks less impressive right now doesn't mean that it's not going to rapidly intensify later today. In fact, that's still what the models are suggesting, that this thing's going to ramp up, turn into a big hurricane as it heads north, and then we can, right before it makes landfall there on Long Island or maybe even a little bit further east than that in Rhode Island. Okay, so we're going to look at all the models here in just a second, but let's start off with an official update from the National Hurricane Center. All right, here's the latest from the National Hurricane Center. And as you can see, uh, this... <laughs> They have just been all over the place with this track. And this is the most recent one here. We still got to become in a hurricane here uh, east of North Carolina. It'll probably be a category one, high end category one, maybe even a category two here around 2 a.m. on Sunday. And then they are expecting it to make landfall as now it seems like a tropical storm in Long Island. OK, so yesterday we had an update that showed that it was going to make landfall as a hurricane. And, you know, it's been moving to the west and to the east. And, you know, I think that, like I said, it depends on what happens today, that's going to really determine where this thing's going to make landfall. Uh, right now, it's very likely that it will happen on Long Island, but there's also a decent chance that we get a landfalling storm a little bit east of that, okay? Some of the models have been trending east, uh, and we could possibly see a landfall in uh, Rhode Island even. So as you guys know, meteorology is not an exact science, uh, but we are getting closer to knowing exactly what's going to happen here. And we can check out and fine tune that forecast now by looking at the forecast models. All right. Here is the latest from the NAM three kilometer model. Okay, if you want to keep up with the date and time, it's always going to be displayed up there. We're starting at 10 a.m. This is what the radar could look like as we go later on into the day. And right off the bat, uh, I'm noticing something here that looks a little off to me. Okay, so this is at 10 a.m. I'm filming this, you know, about an hour or two earlier than that. You know, this is already showing a pretty intense tropical storm, probably a low end hurricane here with a lot of feeder bands and a lot of deep convection in the center. I'm not seeing that. I, I, I mean, you can see the uh, satellite image above my head. I'm not seeing as organized of a storm as what the NAM is showing. So, you know, once again, uh, the NAM is uh, uh, notorious for being a little bit bullish and strong with these tropical storm projections. But I've noticed that the NAM has been the most consistent and uh, accurate with the track of this storm. So uh, we're going to look at this, but we're mainly going to focus on the timing and the track. The intensity of the storm is probably a little bit overdone here on the NAM model. 
So don't pay too much attention to that, okay? We're mainly focused on the timing here. So let's push it forward. Let's go all the way up into 1 p.m. today. And as you can see, this thing is not only going north, but it's also going northeast a little bit. The track here is taking this thing like it's gonna go west and then it goes back and then it goes this way a little bit. It's a really odd track uh, for a hurricane. And once again, you gotta remember as it gets up here into colder waters, uh, the intensity of this storm will be diminished significantly. So it only has until it gets about right here to really intensify. And then we're gonna be working against uh, ourselves with that cold water as it tries to uh, at least maintain hurricane strength as it heads towards the coast of New England, okay? So let's watch that happen. You can see that intensification happening here. It's probably a little bullish here on the NAM, but I do agree that by 8 p.m. this evening, we should have a pretty strong storm here off the coast, south and east of New Jersey and south of Long Island, okay? You'll probably be able to look at radar and satellite data and see a much stronger storm than what we have right now. And then as we go on, it's gonna kind of slow down a little bit, okay? So it goes really fast from where it is right now uh, to that 38 degree parallel line. Uh, but uh, once it gets there, it starts to slow down. And that's another thing that's really going to diminish the intensity of this storm. It slows down once it gets to the colder water. Okay, so it, that means that, you know, it's gonna weaken more while it's over that. But the NAMS says it's gonna hold strong as a pretty strong hurricane or tropical storm and make landfall there in Long Island, probably around, you know, anywhere between 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning, okay? So uh, my video tomorrow should go up right around the time this thing's making landfall, unless there is a drastic change in the timing of when this is gonna make landfall. And as you can see here, even though this is only a tropical storm when it makes landfall, it's still a very strong storm. And I think that a lot of people are gonna kind of brush this under the rug and, and kind of not really worry about it, especially if it remains just a tropical storm. Uh, but the thing is, is the Northeast up here, it's not built for hurricanes, man. Uh, even just little nor'easters that come through in the winter, winter storms and stuff, those things can bring in storm surge that flood houses and cause lots of damage. This thing's gonna be a lot stronger than most nor'easters that come through. So the storm surge is gonna be multiple feet higher uh, than what these guys are used to. There's gonna be a lot of flooding. Uh, and also, you know, if we can get some sustained winds out here in excess of 50 miles an hour, which looks possible, especially in Southern Connecticut, portions of Rhode Island and the Eastern half of Long Island, uh, that, that wind along with the excessive rainfall is gonna bring down a ton of trees. So power outages are to be expected here. Uh, I don't want to, uh, I'm torn here. I don't wanna hype the storm up and be like, oh my God, hurricane's coming. Take shelter now. Get on a lifeboat or something. The Titanic's sinking and everybody's gonna no, I don't want to do that, but I also don't want to downplay it enough to where people don't take it seriously because I'm telling you, even if this is a tropical storm or a weak hurricane, uh, as unimpressive as that sounds, uh, when this makes landfall, it's going to do significant damage. People's homes will be destroyed and there will likely be uh, lasting effects that we will feel from this for uh, a, a pretty decent time into the future. So, uh, you know, don't let your guard down. If you live on the coast, especially don't let your guard down. Now, if you're inland here, in New York or western portions of Massachusetts, I don't think you have anything to worry about. Just some really heavy rain and probably some flooding. Uh, but right here, but right here in this area, the bullseye area, if you live out here, man, please take this seriously as this comes through. And you can see uh, that rain's going to linger all the way up into uh, the central portion of New York. Once again, flooding is going to be a big issue there. And then that's going to go and kind of just sit there for a little while and probably cause significant flooding there in the Adirondacks. Lots of rain is expected with a storm. Uh, anywhere from two to six inches of rain, really. It, it depends on exactly where the storm goes. Uh, but <clears throat> if you're right along that axis of moisture as it comes up, uh, it looks like Manhattan is in the three to four inch range. Uh, and then some places here in uh, in central New York are closer to the six to eight inch range, okay? So it really depends on uh, exactly where the storm hits. Uh, the bottom line here is if you live in a flood prone area in, in Eastern Pennsylvania, in North Jersey, in Long Island, uh, or uh, Western Connecticut, Western Massachusetts, upstate State New York. Uh, just make sure you're prepared for flooding because there's probably going to be a lot of it out there. All right, moving away from the NAM now, and we're going to look at the GFS model. This one's a little bit more uh, accepted as a tropical storm <laughs> model. It's not the best, but uh, we're going to look at the 10 meter gusts here, and this will give us an idea of what the wind field is going to look like as this approaches uh, the Northeast. Also, this model has a pretty different track uh, than the uh, the NAM model. Okay, so it's it's insane to me that we are less than 24 hours away from the storm making landfall and there's still such discrepancies 
in the models. Okay, usually we can fine tune it pretty well at this point, but this one, it, it's given us a run for our money in the meteorology community. But as you can see here, we've got wind gusts around 90 miles an hour with this storm uh, as it's just south and east of Long Island. And that's when it starts to deteriorate, okay? Some places in the eastern portions of Long Island and southern uh, Connecticut and Rhode Island may experience hurricane force winds for a brief period of time, according to this model, around 8 a.m tomorrow then it makes landfall as pretty much a tropical storm with some isolated areas that see gusts in excess of 60 miles an hour okay and it's still important to remember here that this would still be a devastating storm for the people on the coast in massachusetts it's that eastern side that you really got to watch as far as storm surge goes so if it takes this eastern track and makes landfall in rhode island massachusetts down here on the southeastern side get ready for massive storm surge probably higher than what you've seen in a very long time okay i know this doesn't look very impressive. It's just 60 mile an hour winds, but this thing has been gathering water and it's going to take it right there and dump it on the shores of Massachusetts if it takes this path. So uh, from, from Manhattan across Long Island through Connecticut, Rhode Island and Massachusetts, if you live on the coast, prepare for the worst. OK, prepare for the worst. Hope for the best. All right. Now let's take a look at the HWRF. This is my favorite model to look at during hurricane season. Uh, and we're starting off here at 11 a.m. And once again, this one uh, looks a lot stronger stronger to me than what it actually looks like in real life, okay? So we might see some rapid intensification here within the next couple of hours between the time that I'm filming this and 11 or 12 uh, a.m. p.m. today. Uh, and that's what, you know, these models are suggesting. But if we don't, then this might be a little bit overdone here on the HWRF, okay? So we have a pretty organized storm coming together here at 11 a.m. Uh, we can see the sea surface temperatures here. It's getting ready to get into that jet fuel. You see the browns and the, uh, the lighter browns there when the storm is over those kinds of waters it, they tend to explode okay so we've got a brief period of time for this storm to intensify as it heads north and then over here with the precipitable water you can see all that moisture in the air that's there and ready to come down in the form of rainfall in the northeast and then we can see those 925 millibar gusts uh, which show uh, pretty much the intensity of the storm okay and then as we go a little bit further north 11 p.m. tonight it's just a hop skip and a jump away from the eastern tip of Long Island uh, and now the Central pressure there is getting into the cooler waters, okay? Uh, the oranges and the yellows are where it starts to weaken. And let's see what happens with it. As we push it forward, it slows down a little bit and it does make landfall there right on the eastern tip of Long Island as uh, according to this model, possibly just a tropical storm, not a hurricane, okay? So still in this uh, instance, okay, on the eastern side of this storm, uh, in uh, Rhode Island, especially in the bay there and uh, along the coast of the southeastern half of Massachusetts, significant storm surge should be expected. OK, so this is also a little bit further east than what the NAM is showing. The NAM showed landfall here. The GFS showed landfall here. And this one's showing it here. That's my cone of uncertainty. Anywhere in there is where this thing is probably going to go uh, onto shore. So as you can see, the impacts with Hurricane Henry are going to be very intense, no matter if this is a hurricane when it makes landfall or a tropical storm storm, especially along the coast there. All I ask of you guys is if you know somebody that lives up there, please share this video with them, okay? I want them to know all of the different possibilities. Like I said yesterday, if all they're doing is watching the Weather Channel or the news, uh, they're only getting one side of the story. Those guys pick one model and they run with it. Early tomorrow morning, I'm going to have a final update before landfall on Hurricane Henry, okay? So uh, I'm done talking about that for now. Now let's talk about severe weather in the plains. All right, here we are back with the NAM 3 kilometer looking at that central region of the United States which we uh, often look at when we talk about severe weather. Um, as if you didn't know, there is a slight risk of severe weather tomorrow for South Dakota, Nebraska, and western portions of Iowa, okay? And, um, you know, this one was also looking a little bit more impressive yesterday. Today, it doesn't look that good. Uh, let's push this forward here and let's look at what's going to happen tomorrow. Some isolated storms pop up uh, Sunday evening around 7 p.m. here uh, from North Dakota into South Dakota and Nebraska. Now, the reason the slight risk exists is because because even though these are isolated in nature and it's not this giant storm system, uh, these storms are gonna pack a punch, okay? There's a lot of cape out here. As you can see, there's this big nose of two to 3,000 joules per kilogram of cape that's feeding into the storms. And this is kind of like the perfect setup for isolated supercell thunderstorms, okay? Usually when you got this big blob of cape and it's 4,000 joules per kilogram everywhere, that means that there's just too much storms that pop up and you know it turns into a line 
too quickly. Uh, with this system, we're gonna be limited on our moisture and our convective energy. So this does look like it's gonna be an isolated supercell event, which means that the tornado threat is a little bit higher, okay? So uh, especially in South Dakota and Nebraska, watch out tomorrow from uh, 6 p.m. to around 10 p.m. Uh, there is a decent chance of some tornadoes coming through, okay? Not a widespread tornado outbreak by any means, but there is definitely a chance as this moves off to the south and east, especially that little area there along the border of South Dakota and Nebraska. Uh, I think these storms look pretty indicative of tornadic storms, okay? Especially if they can stay separated. Now, eventually, they will become a, uh, you know, a mesoscale convective system of storms that will have a straight line damaging wind threat as they move into Iowa, uh, and then they will eventually die out as well. So uh, that's what we're looking at there for severe weather tomorrow. It's going to affect a small amount of people, but, you know, hopefully there's somebody watching that lives in, down here in uh, South Dakota that is now prepared for what could possibly be a very big severe weather day tomorrow for them anyways. And that's all the weather talk I have for you today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope I covered everything for you. Uh, once again, if you can't become a member, if you don't want to be a part of the live stream this evening, I also post updates on Twitter, Facebook, and all that stuff. So make sure you follow me on all of my social media accounts. And at the very least, just hit that like button, subscribe, ring the bell sign. Do what you can for old Ryan here because it, it takes a lot to put these videos together, okay? And, and, and it's my hope that it, this reaches as many people as possible. And when you hit the like button and stuff like that, or if when you, when you share it on social media, it helps uh, get it out there to more people. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate every single one of you. I'll see you this evening and tomorrow morning. Goodbye.